I'm going to do a video today on changing leaf spring bushings on a big truck. They're not all the same, but I'll show how they get done on this truck. And this is my truck when I drive at work every day. And these are the bushings that I'm going to be changing in these shackles here. First thing is jack it up, both wheels, an inch or so off the ground. First thing I'm going to do is get a scraper and clean off all the excess grease and gunk that's built up around these shackles. As you can see, I got the, a bottle jack right here under the frame. This is a Freightliner FLD. Any other truck that I have to do this on, I'm just going to find a way to do it. This is the best way I found to do it on this truck. Is to put the bottle jack right there. That's a 20 ton. Doesn't have to be that much. A 12 ton will do just fine. And here's another thing I want to show while I'm in here is this loose bushing in here. That is loose on both sides. And what that's doing is, is when I'm steering it left and right, I drive local and I haul heavy loads and there's a lot of turning there's a, a maze we have to drive through for a truck route and a lot of sharp turns with heavy loads on the truck and this leaf spring is shifting left and right and left and right and it's hammering this last time I worked on these that space was taken up well apparently some of the shims have worn out or maybe this leaf spring is wearing down or the, I doubt the shackles would probably wear down first because they're aluminum we have to take this space up as best as I can while we're doing this job. I'm jacking this up a little bit. Just taking some of the tension off. Then I'm going to loosen up these bolts and take them out. And I'll have to just play the jack up and down a little bit till I get the tension off of that pin so that it'll slide out of there without too much trouble. I'm under the truck now and I'm going to take a screwdriver and wedge it. I got these bolts out on both sides of this these aluminum shackles. Now, as you can see there's a split there. That bolt goes through this way and it clamps this thing shut on the pin. I'm going to stick a screwdriver in here and hammer it in. I can't videotape that because I'm holding the camera in my hand. But that's how I'm going to wedge these apart a little bit to give me a little room to get these pins out a little easier. Okay, I did that, hammered, wedged that out a little bit, and uh, these pins will come out easier, but I gotta, I gotta play this jack and get the pressure just right. It's starting to move now. I just keep jacking it up a little at a time, and I'm hitting it just lightly on this grease fitting, and it's, it's starting to move now. That's not the way I want to run it out. I'm going to hit it from the other side because there's no room to get the pin out on this side. I'm going to hit it on this side, but it's easier for me to find out when it's ready by hitting it inside over here. It's easier for me to find out when it's ready for me to just stick a, a punch over here and knock this out all the way out. This pin is rusted in that hole, and I'm going to have a job on my hands getting it out. But, in order to do it, I had to take the top pin, the top shackles off and the pin out of there. I didn't need to change that one, so that's why I wanted to leave it in there. But I don't have any choice. I needed those shackles out of the way because I'm going to have to work on this pin to get it out. It's rusted in the hole. It is moving, but it's very, very tight. Okay, I hammered it from this side back out here and uh, I didn't get this much of it out on this side, but maybe a little more than half that much. And I sprayed it with WD and then I hammered it back in and I'm going to spray this side with WD. I'm going to keep hammering it back and forth uh, until I get that out of there. I'm going to have to give up on driving this pin out because the ends that were protected 
in that aluminum shackle are bigger than the middle. The middle is rusted out, the bushing is rusted out, the bushing is now all swollen up with rust inside there, and the pin slides in and out of the bushing as long as this part that's rotted out is in there. As soon as this end that's clean on either end tries to go in the bushing, it, it, it jams up and I can't move it. So I'm going to cut this off of the torch right here and then I can dry the rest of it out of there. As always when using a torch you got to make sure anything is flammable or that can be damaged by too much heat you got to make sure that is protected or out of the way. My fuel tanks right here but it is full so it's not going to have a hot spot because I'm cutting downwards on this way so any heat that's brushing it over here I know the tanks are full so they're not the fuels not going to get hot enough inside to do anything and my fire extinguisher right here always make sure you got a way to put the fire out if you get one got that cut off and now I'm gonna and I got it deburred a bird to clean the burrs off of it because I don't want those to get hung up in there and I'm gonna cool it down a little bit with some water and put some oil some uh, WD-40 on it again and hopefully we can knock it out in one try here there it is got it out I forgot to mention when you're torching a pin that's got a hole in it that gets grease when you get into that hole it's going to backfire on you that grease is going to light up and throw all kinds of stuff at you so be ready for that uh, you just got to work around that that's just part of it I heat up this, I know not everybody knows all the tricks to a torch, I don't know all of them, but I heat up the bushing here that I'm going to burn out, I keep the heat off of the part that I don't want to burn, and when this lights up cherry red, then I hit the oxygen, and I just follow that line, it'll burn a clean line all the way across to the other side, and then I just knock the whole thing out of there with a, uh, with a chisel and a, and a hammer and sometimes you got to burn both sides if one side doesn't come out so yeah that will burn just the just the bushing it won't burn this part unless you get it too hot and if you get this part red hot too then it'll start burning that but as long as you start getting this part red hot and burn that only you can blow that whole thing all the way out the other side without damaging this board that it's in also my options for burning this is either from this side and the fire coming out here which is going to hit fuel lines and electric cables or my other option is to take this plastic thing off here this uh, I don't know what it's called it's like part of the fender and burn from the other side which I'll have less room to work with I'm going to see if I can find some kind of a piece of sheet metal or something to put up here to block that the fire from being directly on this because it's going to come right out of this tube and be right on that and it's there's no way I can finish cutting that without this lighting up so I'm going to see if I can find a piece of sheet metal to stick up there. Got it burned loose, got part of it out down here on the floor. I'm going to knock the rest of it out. I can't see in there, I'm going to stick my screwdriver and just feel. Yeah, I got it all.
And that's what happens when you don't grease a thing often enough. I'm just putting wheel bearing grease in there, doesn't matter what kind, as long as it's something wet. And I'm putting it on the bushing too. If the bushing will go in by tapping it just lightly, not very hard. That's about it. They're very, they're soft bushings and they're very expensive. So we're going to use this threaded rod, or this is actually a bolt in this case, three-quarter bolt with some washers. Well, my bolt's going to drill right into these, so i got to stop and put a spacer in there. Okay, we've got a socket on there, a one-inch drive socket. I'm ready to put this back together. This upper bushing, I'm not going to change. In fact, I never changed this upper one. I've been driving this truck a long time, about 14 years, and I've changed these things before, one on each side, these whole bracket. It's aluminum, and I don't have enough room to work with a torch to burn this out of there, this bushing out of there. I just put the new bracket on instead of changing the bushing. So putting this thing back together is just reverse of taking it apart and carefully adjust your jacks real slowly and carefully until these holes match up and put some grease inside this bushing before you and on the pin before you put your new pin in there. Before you tighten these up you have to keep adjusting. You have to put these spacers on and this bracket here goes on there it goes on the inside like that so this one goes here like this and the one on top is going to go on that way and you need one heavy washer on this side here on both sides and then these little thin spacers come different sizes you get a stack of those get an assortment of those from Freightliner and put them in as you need them, put two or three on each side, top and bottom, and you're, you're, the idea is to try to take up all the space so that it can't slide left and right like I showed you in the beginning of the video, I had that one that was loose over there. This is another day, a week later, Saturday, and I'm going to do the other side of the spring like I did on the earlier part of this video, same truck, different side. So we're gonna set the camera up and do that. I'm gonna jack it up like I did before with the jack on the leaf spring. You can see the handle there, but not the jack, but it's in there of course. And then I'm gonna loosen up these bolts here there and on the other side I got this jacked up enough to where I can move this thing by hand freely and that means it's safe to take it on off of there the 
take all these spacers off of there. I need a bunch of small shims, but these real thin ones here, and I got some more I'm going to bring out that are in the shop, and one big one on each side of both pins. The big one goes against the spring side. I'm going to take these grease fittings off because I'm going to be hammering on both sides of these pins to get them out unless they come out going one way. I'm not going to throw them away. I'll put them back in the new ones unless there's something wrong with them. Just going to put a new upper bracket on uh, in place of this one. Just got two bolts here and two underneath. So we'll replace this instead of trying to replace the bushing in that. It's not cheap. It costs with taxes maybe 190 bucks. I got this thing on here loosely. These bolts are not on yet. I don't know, can we see those on the video? These upper bolts are not on yet because I don't want it to be, this thing fits kind of loose with those holes. So you gotta snug these bottom ones up, not real tight, but snug them up where, the, where this bracket is touching the frame on both the front and the back bolt, but not real tight because now I gotta tighten these up and then it's going to pull it in tight sideways against the frame and then I'll go back underneath and finish tightening these up tighter. Cleaning up these blocks that go on here, getting ready to put them back. I got to put a bushing in here but I'm just cleaning these blocks to get my area cleaned up a little bit and I just want to show that I've got a area here that's all corroded on uh, one side of this block I guess salt and stuff. We have long winters here in St. Louis area. Um, I'm just going to turn it over and put this clean side on. No big deal. Easy fix. I'm going to use a round file in this in this hole like I did on the other side. You got this pin greased up and that bushing greased up and uh, when you put these in you got to make sure these grease fitting holes are facing out. Now I'm going to clean up all these shims. I'll show how to find out how many you need on both sides to get it spaced out right. First I'm going to space one of these heavy washers over here and another heavy washer on that side. I'm going to adjust that pin to where it looks like it's in the middle. I'm going to put a few little spacers, about the same amount on each side. I'm going to do three right there, and over here. I'm going to pick the best side of these aluminum shackles. And it looks like we have some side play, so I'm going to stick one more shim in on each side, try to keep them balanced. Same amount on each side as best as you can.
I'm still getting some left and right side play. It's very important that we get all of that out of there as much as possible. So I'm going to keep adding shims. Now the shims are going to go in one at a time on alternate sides until I can't get any more in there. So it's important that you get all the gunk off of these shackles before you try to put this back together or you may not get enough shims in there because of the grease and the gunk and then that will get squeezed out of there. That's tight. We're not going to get any more on that. So now what I got to do is take the bolts back out, take the shackles back off, and then we do the same thing on the top. I had to find a big washer to use for a spacer. The ID was the right size, the inside diameter. The OD is a lot bigger, but it doesn't matter. I needed it because I cannot buy the parts to finish it to use the same size shims. Uh, they're not available. This is Saturday night and they won't be available till Monday. And I will be gone with the truck pulling loads Monday. So I had to find something in my junk and I did find a nice big washer. And it's going to make everything slightly over to this side, but that's okay. Uh, we'll make it all fit just fine. Now I gotta adjust the jack to match up with this. Got everything back together except for being able to pull these shackles over I got to pull the leaf spring over that direction towards the other side of the truck because it's just kind of leaning this side because of the way it's sitting on the jacks so I'm tight up here I'm tight down here but in order to tighten this one and this one up I have to pull the whole thing over when I did the other side last week I used these two come alongs on the leaf springs to pull them closer together. Today I'm going to use a port of power and here's my new port of power kit, my old one. The pump went bad and I couldn't get it fixed so I couldn't buy a new pump alone without spending an extravagant amount of money. So I went to Harbor Freight and just bought a 10 ton kit from them. A new pump and a bunch of new cylinders and stuff. But these kits do not come with the pull cylinder. The pull cylinder is one that it relaxes and opens up, gets longer, and then when you pump on it, it, it gets shorter. I've got these chains down here wrapped around each end of the leaf springs. And I have to do this as close to the end as I can so that it will have more power to pull them together. Like I said, it was all I could do with the two come alongs I was scared they were going to break if one broke then the other one would have broken right after it because it would have been taking the whole load by itself so this time I'm using the port of power I'm going to go ahead and hook that up got that ram hooked up on there I'm going to slide these chains all the way as close to the end as I can and still leave myself room to put these bolts in
Well, that's it. Got the bolts in. Now all I gotta do is put the nuts on, tighten it up, and take the quarter power off. We're all back together now. Greased up. Everything's put back in place, and it's ready to go back to work. Thank you for watching.